too many non-traditional students jump straight into the academics without testing the hypothesis, is this the right thing for me right now, today? The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 309. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week where I take your questions now from the Pre-Med Hangout, no longer premedforums.com. We take them directly from the Pre-Med Hangout using the hashtag OPM question. That's old pre-meds, OPM question. Before we jump into our great question today, I want to talk about the MCAT Minute brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. It is August 2022 as this episode comes out, and that means it is almost time to start preparing for the MCAT next year, assuming you are applying in 2023 and taking the MCAT in the kind of recommended time frame of January to April, typically of the year that you apply. If you haven't created a study plan yet, go to blueprintmcat.com, go sign up for a free account and use their study planner tool to figure out what that plan looks like. Work the plan or plan, plan the work and work the plan as they say. Again, go to blueprintmcat.com to get that set up. Let's go ahead and jump into our question today. Someone who has struggled early on in their academic career and is now thinking about making the switch into pre-med and questioning whether or not they can handle the work. All right, our student today asking, I'm currently 29, about to be 30 in July with five kids under... 10, five, five kids, I had to read that twice, five kids under 10. I work as a software engineer and have been working in this field within five years now, for five years now. I want to switch careers to become an OBGYN, specifically for high-risk patients. Due to my own personal experiences all of during all of my pregnancies. However, I only have an associate's degree, which is in software development, and my previous college experience wasn't the best. I actually ended up getting dismissed from one university in 2011. To begin, I started out my journey fresh out of high school, literally that summer after high school graduation in 2010. I first majored in industrial design, yet after failing my art classes and shadowing some people, I realized I didn't want to continue. I then switched to business administration and bombed pretty badly, which caused me to get dismissed in 2011. I stayed out of school and life happened. I got married in 2013, got pregnant the same year with my first daughter. I had no idea the ups and downs of pregnancy, and this was my first real uh, experience with an OBGYN. Throughout the experience, I grew a fascination with my body and how the baby grows from a little seedling to a baby. Along with this, I grew curious about my conditions that I've developed through my pregnancy and how I was ill prepared. I wish I've had I uh, wish I had had started this journey to a healthy pregnancy earlier. With that said, I struggled trying to figure out what to do for a living and was working as a CNA while pregnant, but I had a passion to work in a hospital setting with mothers and babies. So I started thinking about going to nursing school. I never applied due to an incident while tending to a resident. I ended up quitting and deciding to look into a non-healthcare career for my safety. Fast forward a few months later, I'm flipping through a high school yearbook one day and I see a picture of me under a STEM scholar bulletin. On my bio, I mentioned that I wanted to be a computer engineer or a video game developer. I then thought I found my calling. So I looked for schools that I could take online classes so I could stay at home, be a mom with when my daughter uh, was born. Fast forward, I get accepted to a technical college in 2014, shortly before my daughter was born that June but I struggled trying to make ends meet, having another baby in 2016 and having marriage issues. I finally do graduate uh, graduate three years later in 2017 and land my first job as a developer in 2018. I soon quickly realized that this may not be the career for me, yet I stick through it. I ended up divorcing my first husband the same year and lost that job shortly afterwards in 2019. I met my now husband months after I separated and got another job as a software engineer in another state. We moved there and things were going well at first until after the pandemic, I got let go shortly after returning from my maternity leave, my third child, I stayed out of work for a year, had another baby in 2021 that got pregnant again late 2021 with my fifth and hopefully last child. Uh, Why hopefully? There there are ways to solve that (laughs) due in August 2022. As of January 2022, I'm back to working as a software engineer, but I still don't feel fulfilled 
or secure in this job. I don't know if it's me, but to me, the way I'm thinking is that it's almost five years from graduating in software development, and I don't feel that I have progressed in this career, nor am I satisfied. I'm back to wanting to go back to school to get my BS in health services and then apply to medical school. Yet I'm afraid I may be too late though, because I struggled in school. What do I do? So really long story there for what is a pretty simple question. I struggled early in my academic career. I think I wanna go back to medical school. I'm afraid I won't be able to do well enough. Or maybe that's not even the question. I'm afraid it's too late because of all the damage that I did early on. Upward trends are very important in this game, especially if you struggled very early on in your college career. That means you can finish with a 3.5 GPA. Let's use 3.5, easy math. Assuming all credits are the same every semester. If you get a 3.0, 3.0, right? Bs, not terrible. Obviously, this student was academically dismissed, so they're probably much lower than that. But just for some simple math, right? 3.0, 3.0, 4.0, 4.0. That's a 3.5, all things being equal. That is better than a 3.5 where the student went 4.0, 4.0, 3.0, 3.0, which is still uh, not as bad as, or just as bad, whatever, is 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, right? Those all tell different stories. And ultimately, when students struggle early, they have to show academic capability moving forward. That final number that they get to may not be super sexy. It may only be a 3.0. It may be a 3.1, a 3.2, whatever it may be. But it's the upward trend that a lot of schools will look into. I talk about this all the time. Uh, One of my good friends who's now at uh, Vermont uh, Medical School as the Associate Dean of Admissions, but she used to be the uh, uh, Director of Admissions at University of Illinois Chicago, their admissions committee had the ability to recalculate your GPA, removing a year of poor performance because they understood, they were empathetic enough to understand that students struggle for one reason or another. They have health issues, family members have health issues, they go through a bad breakup, whatever happens, they understand that students have issues and they can recalculate GPAs. Most medical schools will look at trends and not just look at that final number to determine your ability to do well in medical school. Every medical school has some sort of internal number that they look for, whether that's a solid GPA number, uh, like only the GPA, or the trend, the story behind that number, whether they're looking at last 20 credit hours, 40 credit hours, 60 credit hours, whatever they're looking at, they're looking at something to, to say, hey, based on our history, based on our curriculum, based on the rigor of our specific medical school, we know that students with this story, this trend, this number, whatever it is, they do okay. AKA, they pass. <laughs> that's that's what they're looking for. Obviously, they want students to excel and, and get the best board scores, step two, assuming it stays uh, scored and doesn't move past fail at some point in the future, whatever that is. They understand that students struggle early on. That's okay. The big question is, can you improve? What I would do before anything else, and this is a trend lately, get some more clinical experience. You were a CNA, which is great. So you've been in in that field. Now you obviously had an experience where you didn't feel safe and you removed yourself from a clinical environment. I would get back into a clinical environment as soon as you can to prove to yourself that this is still an environment or is again an environment that you want to be in, okay? That's first and foremost. Too many non-traditional students jump straight into the academics without testing the hypothesis, is this the right thing for me right now, today? So get back into some clinical experience, get back into some shadowing, prove to yourself that this is what you want, and then use that motivation to go do well in your classes. And don't focus on that final number. 
Look at the trends. If you haven't created a mapped app account yet, go do that. Enter all of your courses, or, or pretty soon we'll enter the courses for you, but, but uh, not as we're recording this. Enter all of your courses and go look at that green semester trend line. That's the trend line that I go to when students ask me to look at their account. And I can look at that trend line and go, you're good. Your final number may only say 315, but your trend line, super great, not concerned. So get all of those grades in there, start calculating, start making decision ba decisions based on good, accurate data, and test that hypothesis that you want to get back into a clinical field by getting some more clinical experience, some recent clinical experience. Hopefully that's helpful. You're not too old. You haven't messed up enough to, to not be able to overcome. And ultimately, that's the answer to your question. So go do it. And don't forget to check out blueprintmcat.com for a study plan to help you crush the MCAT when you get to that point. I hope this was helpful. Again, if you have a question you want answered here on the old pre-meds podcast, go to premedhangout.com Ask your question with the hashtag OPM question, and we'll answer it here on this podcast. Hopefully, we'll pick it to answer here on this podcast. Hope you have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds Podcast.